good morning, church. Happy Mother's Day here. Good to be here with you this morning. Uh, yesterday I was up with uh, my mom and uh, the mother of my kids, and uh, we were celebrating Mother's Day, and I got to go watch a few uh, rugby games of my youngest daughter, and that's why my head is glowing, because I didn't put any sunscreen on. It was a beautiful day yesterday in Calgary, like I know it was here as well. And uh, so I'm happy to be here. I'm just going to sweat a little bit up here on the stage. But uh, Mother's Day, so much fun. And I've learned a lot about my, uh, the mother of my kids over the last 25 years and uh, quite a few ways that I can communicate love to Janelle. Uh, about 15 rolled off my mind as I was thinking about it here. First of all, telling her that I love her. That uh, works well. Sometimes it gets a little rote, so I got to go a different route, a uh, different uh, way. I can write her a note. I can uh, pull out my texting machine and fire a text off to her. I did that at the beginning of last month, the first seven days. I just wrote her seven things every morning that I appreciated about her. I can give her a back rub, all right? She enjoys that, and I know the spots in particular that where she gets her tension at. I can take her out on a date. I can cozy up to her on the couch. I can go to Costco with her and help her to shop. That shows love to her. I can tell her what a great job she's done in front of her friends. I can call her in the middle of the day. And uh, when I catch her, she really enjoys that. I don't do enough of that, but I should. I listen, and I try to pick up what she wants for a gift for Mother's Day. And then I try to find a way to surprise her with it. I take the kids out on, the, on a date. She enjoys it when I do that. I help her outline one of her papers for her school. Thank goodness she's finished school now, so I won't have to do that anymore. She's happy about that as well. Uh, I help finish one of her projects for her when she gets tired of it. All right, Janelle's a great starter, but she needs some help finishing the projects that she gets going. I can sit at the counter with her while she does the dishes and talk to her. Now, some of you are like, why don't you get up and help her with the dishes? <laughs> she doesn't like that as much when I do that because she feels like then she has to go and do something else. She likes it when she's doing something if I just sit there and focus on her and talk with her. Uh, also, just verbally affirming her about what a beautiful woman she is to me. Fifteen things that I show my wife how I love her. These are different ways that I communicate my love to her. Some of them are, ov are overt, but many of them are more subtle. Some of them are pretty indirect, but they all speak to her. With thoughtfulness and good intent of heart, I tell Janelle that I love her. Now, in a similar vein, there are many and varied ways in which God speaks and communicates to each and every one of us. He is not bound by one way. He is the God of all creativity, and he loves to communicate to us, and he loves to speak with us, and he has many things that he wants to talk to us about. So the big idea of my message today is pretty simple. God speaks to us in many different ways. Last week, we looked at the primary way that God speaks to us, and it's through his word, Scripture. Scripture. That's how we, God communicates with us. And God communicates flawlessly to us through the Bible. The Bible is the inerrant and true guide to knowing God. But the Bible isn't the only way that we can know God and the only way that God communicates with us. And the Bible is clear about this. In Job 33, 14, it says this, God speaks in different ways and we don't always recognize his voice. God speaks to us in different ways. And today we're going to learn about a few other ways that God communicates with us. I can't give you them all because he does many, but we're going to look at a few. I was, in, I, I was listening to uh, one of our pastors back up at uh, my church up in Calgary, and he said this, an interesting quote. He said, the Bible is a story of God speaking outside the Bible. Let me say that again. Think about it. The Bible is a story of God speaking outside the Bible. I think there's some truth behind that there. Today we're going to look, though, at four different passages in the Bible that clearly communicate different ways that God speaks to us. 
God loves to speak to us, and he longs to communicate with us. And in the Old Testament, the way to hear God was to hear either through a prophet, through a scroll that was written down, or by going to the temple. His presence was in the holy hole of the holies at the temple. And so people had to go there to be close to him. His voice wasn't generally available at all. But that changed at the cross of Jesus Christ. When Jesus went to the cross and he died and he paid the penalty for our sin, at the moment of his death, he said, it is finished. And what happened? The temple veil was torn in two of the Holy of Holies. And the Spirit of God left that place. And where did it go? Well, the Spirit of God left that place. Fifty days from there, Pentecost happened. And the Spirit came back and entered into each and every one that said they follow after Jesus Christ. So the Holy Spirit left that physical temple and entered into a new place that is now known as the temple. The temple of the Holy Spirit. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. This is going to be the most amazing thing that you will hear all day. The Spirit of God comes and makes residence inside of you. Why? Because he wants to speak to us. He wants to guide us. He wants to affirm us. He wants to direct us. We have the Spirit of God living inside of us. That's why when we read the Bible, it's illuminated to us. That's why our consciences are made more acute. That's why the fruit of the Spirit is growing inside of you. That's why your heart for the poor and the needy is continuing to extend itself. That's why you can know, you can hear the voice of God. We just have to open our ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to us. Jesus said about his followers in John 10, 27, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. And as I said today, we're just going to look at a few of the ways in God, the ways that God communicates with us or he could choose to speak to you. First of all, we're going to look at four different passages here. So if you're ready, you have your Bibles open or you have your devices open there, we'll go to these four different passages if you're quick enough to get there. But the first one is Acts chapter 16. It's interesting what happens here. God is speaking. Are you listening? Paul and his companions, it says in Acts chapter 16, verse 6, traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Now, it doesn't say exactly how. It just says that the Holy Spirit did. But when they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. We don't know how, but he communicated that to them. So then they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. I think that's probably a pretty safe conclusion, isn't it? They got a vision, come to Macedonia and preach the gospel. So what did Paul do? He didn't wait around. He said, yeah, let's get up, let's go, let's do it. I mean, this mirrors our definition of a disciple, someone who hears the voice of God and obeys. Paul mirrored this in this way. God wants to speak to us. Even when we aren't paying attention, God wants to break in and speak to us. Maybe we hear God's voice and we attribute it to other things, but sometimes we don't hear because we don't expect God to speak. But we should be living with this expectation. God wants to speak to us. Paul says in Ephesians 6.18, he says, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Stay alert. Have expectation. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, pray continually. Always be with expectation that God is going to guide and it's going to direct Now, there's a difference between learning how to hear God and being a little bit uncomfortable and stumbling around and trying to figure it out and just not even paying attention. Honestly, if you are right at the beginning of this and you're just on the learning curve, you're just starting this out, 
be patient with yourself. Some of you, I've heard, are trying very hard to understand or you're getting a little bit uh, confused about how to differentiate between God's voice and your own voice. And it's creating a little bit of uh, consternation. I just tell you, relax. It's going to take some time. God is going to come along inside and help you. He loves to do this. He loves to come alongside and help us and teach us in this way. Many of you are just beginning this journey. And so we must remember to walk with faith and confidence and our hearing is going to grow. I didn't figure out all 15 of those things that showed Janelle how I love her in the first two months of us being married. It's taken me a long time to figure some of those things out. 25 years we've been together. And I'm just still learning. Right? Maybe I'll have another 15 in another 25 years from now. I don't know. But just keep walking down the pathway. I love what Brother Lawrence says in the practice of the presence of God. He says, There is not in the world a kind of life more sweet and delightful than that of a continual conversation with God. I want that sweet and delightful life where I'm being directed by God throughout my day. A couple of years ago, I, I had a chance to meet someone who had just made a commitment to Jesus. She was a brand new believer. And she went to one of our Hearing God seminars and she wrote a little note and she said uh, that I could share that. And this is what she said. She said, I participated in a Hearing God seminar and I loved it. It was so eye-opening to me and my spiritual journey. The idea of God speaking to me wasn't new, but as I began to practice more and more, it became easier to hear his voice. During this time, I found that my devotional time became more consistent, as did my Bible reading. I also found myself asking questions of God more often in prayer. I know that God speaks. He's been speaking to me. The previous night, I had been struggling with a decision to either go to church or go skiing. And it continued into the morning. I know that some of you struggle with that same question at times. She said, I sat down, opened up my Bible, and I was reading in Hebrews chapter 10. And one of the verses spoke directly to me. She said, and she wrote this out, and let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of the return is drawing near. She said, I knew that God wanted me to go to church that morning. And so she went on in her note and she said, When I first began this particular part of my journey of faith, one of actively listening, I felt silly most of the time, and I wondered what I was doing. I often doubted I was receiving an answer or pondering it as if it was my own imagination conjuring up these thoughts or images or my memory pulling up verses. But with daily practice, I began to feel confident about hearing God's voice. I began to open my ears to his voice and saying, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. I, I was just moved by that. I thought that was a powerful expression of her journey with getting to know the voice of God. And if we angle our hearts with this sort of anticipation and action, there are many ways that God is going to speak to us. One of the other ways that God will speak to us is through other people. And if you have your Bibles and you want to flip open to Acts chapter 15, I'll get there in a second. But God often uses the voices of other people to communicate his thoughts or his messages to us. Have you ever been sitting in a church service and God starts speaking, you, speaking to you through the preacher up in front? Has that ever happened to you? A few of you are like, yeah. A few of you are like, yeah, I nodded off to sleep when the preacher was preaching. But preaching, oftentimes, God will speak to our hearts through this. It's happened to me. It's happened throughout the millennia as well. Jonah, when he went to preach into Nineveh, the people heard God's voice and they repented. Peter, Paul, Apollos all proclaimed the good news and people responded. Paul said this, actually, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. He says this, he says, Therefore, we never stop thanking God that when you received his message from us, you didn't think of our words as mere human ideas. You accepted what we said as the very word of God, which of course it is. And this word continues to work in you 
who believe. God can speak through preaching. He speaks through the delivering of the good news. How do us as preachers know this? Because many times people will come up to us at the end of a message and they will say, be challenged by something or encourage something and they will say what it is and we as preachers will think back in our mind and we'll say, I don't even remember saying that. It wasn't in my notes. It must have been God speaking to that person, prompting them in that way. Discussions among believers as well can turn into God moments. And we can hear the voice of God through other people. Now we see this in Acts chapter 15. All right, they have a problem in the church in Acts. And there is a problem here that uh, people are coming and they're putting extra rules on the Gentile followers. And so they start to have this discussion in Acts 15. And uh, Peter stands up and says, no, we shouldn't do this. And then Paul and Barnabas stand up and they start giving testimony to how they see the Holy Spirit working among the Gentile believers. And then James stands up and says, yeah, this shouldn't be either. And then in verse 23, it says this. They, they write a letter to the Gentile believers. And it says, this letter is from the apostles and the elders, your brothers in Jerusalem. It's written to the Gentile believers in Antioch, Syria, Cilicia. Greetings. We understand that some men from here have troubled you and upset you with their teaching, but we did not send them. So we decided, having come to complete agreement, to send you our official representatives, along with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, who have risked their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we are sending Judas and Silas to confirm what we have decided concerning your question. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay no greater burden on you than these few requirements. And they go on to lay out the requirements, and then they say the messengers went at once to Antioch, and they called a general meeting of all the believers and delivered the letter. And there was great joy throughout the church that day as they read this encouraging message. They get together, they have a conversation led by the Holy Spirit, and that becomes God's direction for the Gentile believers. Mature Christians who are with wisdom, who are leaning upon the word of the Lord, resulted in a corporate decision, and this becomes the voice of God. In our daily lives, we should expect God to speak through people around us, especially those people who love and care about us and are close to us. Now, God often speaks to me through, through Janelle. Janelle brings a message to me. Sometimes it's encouraging, and sometimes it's a little bit more confrontational. Sometimes I wish Janelle would say it a little bit more nice, but oftentimes God speaks through her to me, and I hear the voice of God through her. We have this role in the lives of other people to help them to hear the voice of God as well. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16 says this, Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. We have this opportunity. We have this privilege. God is going to use us in this way. Now, we shouldn't necessarily seek this all the time, but when this does come, this role should be undertaken with humility and gentleness and patience. Whether it's with our brothers and sisters here, whether it's with our families, we should be humble voices of God when he calls us to do this. And we should be willing and able to speak this and to hear this. But let me offer this warning to you. If you feel God prompting you to tell something to someone, this should be done with great humility. It should be done in the way that, and I think Jeremy does an excellent job of teaching this in our seminars, we should preface this with a phrase that says something like, I submit to you, or I give to you. I humbly come to you and I say this. And just a phrase like that helps us to remember that we are fallible human beings who don't always accurately hear the voice of God. And we recognize this and we lay this down humbly before these people. And this is imperative for us in this way. Now, we want to give you an opportunity at the end of the service here 
to communicate what God is speaking to you to the rest of the church. And it's going to look like we're going to do some listening to God in a little bit here, and then you're going to have an opportunity to be able to go out on video in our foyer uh, here and just do that and communicate what God has been encouraging you with. So anticipate that. But another way that God chooses to speak to us is through discipline. Through the discipline of God, God will speak to us. Now, this isn't always great. This isn't always fun. But God speaks to us loudly sometimes through this. Galatians chapter 2 will speak about this, and I'll talk about this in a moment. But uh, some Christians never ask God about their unpleasant circumstances and what he is trying to do through this, just assuming that the unpleasant events that they're going through are just part of life, and they just kind of grit their teeth and try and get through it. Others assume that every bad thing that they go through is due to the enemy. I think both these things aren't great. But God is the one who will bring us through discipline and teach us through this. Hebrews chapter 12 makes it clear. He says, my child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. God wants to correct us. He wants to teach us. He wants to help us. And this can take many different forms in our lives. He can just teach us through the circumstances that we're going through. And he takes us through this, and he wants to uh, disciple us through this. He also allows us the full consequence of our sin. If we are walking in sin, doing something we know that's against the will of God, he will discipline us through going through the consequences of what we go through in this way. But God also comes alongside in our trials and difficulties that just happen because we're in a fallen world. And he will teach us through those as well. It's not because we did anything wrong. It's not because we're suffering in particular. But just because we live in a broken world, God will use that as well. And he will train us and teach us. Now, God sometimes will even use others to come along and to help us by confronting us in embarrassing ways. Now, we see that here in Galatians chapter 2. Paul comes along and he confronts Peter about his hypocrisy. So in Galatians 2 verse 11, it says this, But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him to his face, for what he did was very wrong. When he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile Christians who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of criticism from these people who insisted on the the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish Christians followed Peter's hypocrisy, and even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. When I saw that they were not following the truth of the gospel message, I sent to Peter in front of all the others, since you, a Jew by birth, have declared the Jewish laws and are living like a Gentile, why are you now trying to make these Gentiles follow Jewish traditions? Peter's sin was a public sin here, so Paul confronted him publicly. And the words out of Paul's mouth to Peter were a chastisement. They were an admonishment, and they were a judgment directly from God. But I have no doubt that they were heeded in this instance. I believe that Peter saw his hypocrisy for what it was and repented and turned around. And he was drawn closer to God as a result of this. Now, I've had this happen in my own life multiple times, where people have come in and spoken to me and confronted me, In my sin, I could give you great examples of this. But just a quick one in this. In my small group a few years back, one of my friends came and told me about a situation that he had observed between my wife and myself. And he confronted me about what happened in that moment. And when he talked to me about that, I knew that he was speaking the very words of God. And I was humbled in that moment. And I went back and talked to my wife and repented right away. And that literally changed our relationship. All because my friend came alongside and he spoke this word of admonishment to me. 
I could never thank him enough for that. Those words he spoke to me from that day were hard to hear, but they were straight from God's mouth. In the Old Testament, God expected his people to make a connection between their negative circumstances and his voice. God, by his spirit, will speak to us in this same way now. We just have to seek his face in the midst of this. God can and will do this, and we need to have this listening voice. Now, my fourth one here is probably the most common way that God speaks to us. And it's easy to overlook this, but this is God's still, small voice. This is why we need to cultivate the heart of listening to the voice of God. In Nehemiah chapter 7, Nehemiah puts it this way. He says this, God put it in my heart to gather the nobles, the officials, and the people in general to be registered. All right, he heard the voice of God and he obeyed. How did God do it? God put it in his heart. It's this still, small voice. And how do we get to hear this? We get to know God and who he is. And we get to know him through his word in this way. And we take time each day to listen to his voice. Now we got to get away from this fast-paced, distracted society for a few moments each and every day to be quiet before him. You know, one of the, the fourth of the Ten Commandments is to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy. The Sabbath is a day where we step away from busyness, and we enjoy rest with God. We need this to connect with God so that we can hear his heart. We can hear his voice. We can pay attention to what he's saying. Who was really good at this? Jesus was. That's what his life was about, was taking time to listen to the voice of God. Now, we see this particular in Je- throughout Jesus' biographies, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But particularly in the biography written by Luke, we see this. At every major point in Jesus' life and ministry, he takes time, he separates himself, and he goes and he prays. Sometimes he prays through the night. At every instance, at his baptism, right before his baptism, before his selection of his disciples, before Peter's confession of who Jesus is, at the transfiguration, at his teaching on the Lord's Prayer, right before Peter's denial. Jesus is deep in prayer, and it says something like this. We see in Luke chapter 5, verse 16. But Jesus would often slip away to the wilderness and pray. When people were pressing in around him, when the crowds were growing larger, When his popularity was getting greater, what did Jesus do? He said, no, I need to step away. I need to get by myself. I need to spend time with my heavenly father and listen to what he has to say. How much more do we need to get away and to be quiet and to spend time listening to the voice of our heavenly father? We need to learn to hear that voice just like Jesus. I was convicted by this. When was the last time that I ever spent a night with God in prayer? All night. I've never done that. I want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the still, small voice speaking to me. And I know he's going to say things that lead me, guide me, encourage me, help me draw me closer to him. But a year ago, I was reading a biography of Hudson Taylor. Don't know if you've heard of this guy, but he was a man of prayer. In the 19th century, he was a famous missionary to China. He was the founder of a a mission organization called China Inland Mission, which at his death included 205 mission stations with over 800 missionaries. And they had had the opportunity of leading more than 125,000 Chinese people to Jesus. But there was one story at the beginning of the biography that really struck me in this way. Hudson talked about living a life of rebellion against God, going his own way, 
When one day he found himself in his father's study and he pulled this gospel track off the shelf and he started reading through it and, and he couldn't get it out of his mind in the moments that he was there and finally he just fell to his knees and he gave his life over to God. And his mom, who was away at the time, came back after a long trip, walked in the door and Hudson was there and he greeted her with the news that he had turned his life over to Jesus. And his mom said, I know. She said, 10 days ago, on the very date on which you tell me you read the track, I spent the entire afternoon in prayer for you until the Lord assured me that my wayward son had been brought into the fold. Our God still speaks. He speaks in many different ways. How does God whisper to us? He gives us peace. He tweaks our conscience, inner promptings. God moves in many and varied ways. I read a story of this. It's 10 days ago, on May 2nd. There was a couple of teenage kids, 17 years of age. Uh, Tyler Smith and Heather Brown were their names. And they were on senior skip day down in Florida. And so they said, we're skipping classes, and they headed off to the beach. They got to one of the beaches, and they started swimming. And unfortunately, they got caught by one of the currents, and they got dragged out into the ocean. And they tried frantically to get back, but they weren't getting anywhere. They ended up a mile and a half off of shore, and they were getting more and more fatigued. When finally Tyler said, I cried out to God and I said, if you really have a plan for me, just do something. And he said, in the next moment, I looked up and I saw this big boat in front of me. And they have a picture of the boat. On the side of the boat, it says, amen. (laughs) God speaks to us. And sometimes it's in the form of a boat that says, amen, on the side of it. When they fished both of them out of the water, Heather's first words when she got on the deck was, God is real. And CNN interviewed the owner of the boat afterwards, and he said, my my faith was strengthened by this. There were too many coincidences for it not to be divine motivation. It had nothing to do with me. Our God still speaks. He longs to communicate with us and show us who he is. And I believe that God wants to communicate with us right now. And so we're going to take a few moments just to do this. I'm going to give you three or four minutes here just to be quiet and to listen for God's voice. So what we've learned over the last couple of weeks is oftentimes what a good way to go about doing this is is just get a, ask God a question And then spend some time in quietness, and God will often speak to us through a word, a picture, a verse, or a thought. So we're going to ask God a question here. I'm going to pray this for us in a moment, and the question is going to be, God, what do you want to say to encourage me today? So if you'll grab a piece of paper there, the question is right at the bottom of your bulletin on the back there. If you have that there, you can grab any other paper. You can grab your phone, all right, and there's a a pen or a pencil Uh, right in between the seats in front of you there. And pull this out. And I'm going to pray for us here, and then I'm just going to give you three minutes or so just to listen to see what God has to say to you here. All right? Let's listen to God together. Heavenly Father, we know you are a creative God, one who loves to speak to us. And so I pray right now, Lord, that you would open our ears to hear what you have to say to us. And I just want to ask you this question, God, and we want to ask you this question. God, what do you have to say to encourage us today?
Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what you've said to us already this morning. We trust you, and we thank you that you speak. Continue to guide us and show us your path. Pray these things, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. So our definition of a disciple is one who hears the voice of God and obeys and teaches others to do the same. May we continue developing our ears to hear what God is saying to us. And then may we have the boldness to do what he has called us to do and be obedient to what he has called us to do. But let us join together in continuing to worship the one who speaks to us and the one who loves when we spend time with him. Amen.